Welcome to this video review and today I'm going to talk about a clip-on device made by Inferay or E-Ray like some people call it. It's a clip-M device and the whole name of the device is a CML25 so it means a clip-M device with a 25 millimeter objective lens. As you probably know Inferay is one of the biggest producers of thermal optics in, in China. So they compete against Hik Micro and Guide and Dali and similar brands. Uh, they're also becoming stronger and stronger in Europe, um, where they compete with Pulsar normally and Nighthawk and similar. Producers, even though lately uh, Steiner, Leica, uh, Zeiss uh, and many others uh, came into this, into this play, um, still, I would say that all of these premium European brands, <clears throat> they still need some time to, to really pick up their game. So uh, this device was introduced in 2021. It's a really compact device made out of magnesium housing, at least at, this is claimed. Um, and it weighs only 290 grams, even though when you have it in your hand, it looks even smaller. So it's quite heavy for this size. Approximately 13 centimeters of length, 7 centimeters in height and 5 centimeters, maybe even less than 5, 4.5 centimeters in, in width. Really compact device. It's powered by CR123A batteries. They also say that you're able to power it with 16 650 batteries. Uh, with the CR123A uh, batteries, I think it works roughly 2 hours, a little bit less. Please check our real battery life uh, blog posts on our blog. Also for the startup time, we measured the real startup time. It's approximately six and a half seconds. Ready to use is around eight seconds. It also has also sleep mode and <clears throat> the thread. It's a really small thread. I think it's M30. <clears throat> so you need a reducing ring, which you're getting with the device to convert it to 55 uh, millimeter thread, uh, which is standard for all the adapters, either for Smart Clip or Rusan. Um, like I said, it's powered by CR123A battery, even though here you can see it has a type C port where you're able to connect it to the external power bank or even charge the battery inside of the device. I think it, it's possible. If, if, if I'm wrong on this, please use the comments below. Uh, uh, it's very well made. It's very sturdy, like robust and so on. Uh, I think it's IP66 um, environmental protection. So it can be splashed by water. You're not able to submerge it, at least I think. Uh, it's made in China and it comes with three years warranty. Really, really compact. Uh, I would say it's very similar to Night Nighthawk Viper in this regard. So a small compact device, very light device and so on. Even though a Viper is a completely different beast with a, a little bit bigger objective lens. <clears throat> okay, so the sensor inside, it's a normal vanadium oxide sensor 384 by 288. Uh, I think it's 17 microns of pixel pitch, 50 hertz and roughly 40 millikelvins of NETD. So that means what is the smaller, smallest temperature difference, then the device can still, um, still me uh, I would say, uh, indicate the, the two points of, of different temperature. It means basically how good the details are when you're seeing them. It has an automatic calibration uh, mode and for the screen, it's uh, OLED screen, I think the device works down to minus 20 and the size of the screen is 1024 by 768. Uh, when you put on the eyepiece and you're able to use it as a monocular, it even has a mounting foil point for the helmet because it has a one-time magnification. Uh, but normally you have to choose between the monocular mode and the clip-on mode. Uh, what's very interesting is the the button, it only has one button and this button has all the functions. So you're able to press it 
and then you rotate for the options. You also turn on and turn off the device with this button. It's very similar if you remember six, seven years ago to the Pulsar Quantum devices or the DFA 75. They had similar, <clears throat> uh, similar buttons for control of all the functions. Uh, on this uh, particular infrared, it's really high quality button. The clicks are crisp, very audible, tactile, really, really nice. And I really like the concept of toggling between all the options just with, with a short press and a long press and rotating of this button. It works perfectly, at least for me. Um, okay, I already mentioned one-time magnification. It has a 25 millimeter objective lens. They claim that the, the that this lens have a fast aperture of f1. Uh, field of view is approximately 260 meters on 1,000 meters, so you are able to to use it as a I would say um, helmet mounted device if you wish. The range of detection is approximately 900 meters. It has five color modes and close focus is adjustable really, really nicely. Uh, I tried it, the use with glasses is also possible, but I do have to mention that the screen is really small compared to normal traditional uh, monoclars, which are not meant to be also clip-on devices. Um, they say that it's Bluetooth connectable with phones, even though I'm almost sure that no videos or photos can be made with this device and it has no internal memory. If I'm wrong, please correct me down in the comments, but I tried and I didn't find the possibility how to connect it to the phone, even though it says Bluetooth connectivity on the box. Okay, like with all my reviews, um, I think I went through majority of everything else what's important of this device. So we come to the to the part which is most, most interesting for majority of our viewers. And this is sweet and sour and then the competition. So what I found really sweet with this device and what I found sour, what could have been done better. And then what are the main competitors? The price of this device is roughly 2,500 euros. Now, it was more than 3,000 euros at the beginning with it, when it was introduced in 2021. But you know that the prices in in in, uh, in thermal are really in flux. So if you're looking at this in 2023, now these devices are probably already below 2,000 euros. We'll see the prices go up and down with, with thermal devices, which is really, really different compared to the conventional optics. I didn't mention other parts that you get with the device, so the carrying bag, which it's really nicely made, the charging cable and the reducing ring, which is really important, even though these reducing rings are also produced by uh, Smartclip and Rusan as well, if you are not, uh, if you lost the original which comes with the device. So what is sweet, what I really like with this device, the build quality, I would say it's perfect. Uh, perfect. It's really good. It also looks like it has some similarities with the with, uh, military devices. That's really interesting. Uh, so the build quality is really nice. Also the how the focusing knob works and so on. The size and weight. This device is really compact. You can put it in your any pocket and, and the image quality is really good for such a compact device. So it's really, really good. I also like the eyepiece concept. Just a small rubber which you attach to, to the thread. It, will, it would be much better if you wouldn't need to screw it on, if you just put it on, it would be even better. But, and I also like the concept of producing a device like this because it's really different to all other clip-ons made by Infiray. So I like the way that they, they think out of the box and not doing all clip-ons completely equal just with a different uh, sensors and different lenses. Okay, so what do I think is sour with this device? <clears throat> the batteries. We know that CR123A, it's not a good solution for a battery. Uh, and also, it's really hard to change it quickly because you have to uh, rotate this cap from a thread. I will show you. So, when you compare this with the solutions, let's say from Pulsar, how they change the batteries quickly on their devices, this is definitely not a good option. Okay, so the batteries, no Wi-Fi and no, I would say, smartphone uh, connectivity. This is something that I really don't like that much. 
I also think that in 2022 all of these devices should have uh, possibility of image capture and video capture. Um, the, what is also sour is a little bit is the is the threat, even though I'm picky here, um, that you need to put a, a reducing ring for a standard threat for uh, and then normally you're not able to use the monocular anymore uh, for the for the normal uh, clip-on adapters. I think that it would be the easiest if all of these devices would just be produced with this standard 52 millimeter thread. I say standard, nobody standardizes it, but it's an industry standard. Everybody uses it. Okay, all in all, I would say you're getting a, if you're into a market to get a really compact device, easy to use, this is it. What I also like, I forgot when I talked about sweet things, the button. I adore this button. It's so easy, just one button, nothing else, and you're able to do everything with it. I still miss the buttons and the same function, I would say, on, on the old Quantums from Pulsar. They were so easy to use, just rotate and push the button. It's really, really good solution. Okay, so now we can talk about the competition. So this is a roughly 2,500 euros um, a device with a 2,500 euros price point. So 2,200 euros Pusa Proton. A little bit bigger, even even nicer in terms of uh, of uh, design and the build quality, with an interchangeable battery, which is much much better, also much heavier than on the CML25. And okay, 300 euros cheaper. I would say the main, apart from the size factor, the main advantage of the of the Infra uh, for a little bit more money is that it has a um, adjustable focus and a little bit bigger lens. Well, well, the lens is not bigger. Here's 30, here's 25, but it has an adjustable focusing, and this is something what gives it <clears throat> a little bit of an edge when you when we talk about the um, image quality. Um, so here it's more like okay Pulsar is made in Europe it has a service in Europe it's even nicer in terms of build quality and so on but it has a fixed focus this one has a adjustable focus and it's even lighter it's even smaller so it's it it depends what it's more important to you the second competitor is the Nighthawk Viper almost equal in size and weight uh, with an with some advantage in terms of the battery, but uh, both of these two devices, I would say, orientated towards more traditional users without Wi-Fi capabilities and so on, and without all the smart functions. Um, the image quality normally in the Viper is better, but again, 500 euros more expensive. So it's, again, what, what rocks your boat better. Uh, if you're into image quality, then the Viper is better normally. If you're into compactness, then the CML25 is better. Um, also, with the Viper, the eyepiece is much easier and faster to attach and disattach. Now, if you're if you're not into small devices, Hik Micro, uh, Thunder TH35. It's also an interesting competitor. 500 euros more expensive, with even better image quality, but much bigger, much bulkier, much heavier with a quite complicated system for the attaching of, uh, of the adapters. So this was it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you find it useful or if I missed out on anything, please use the comments below and see you in the next one.